Everyone loves a last minute winner, unless it's your team that's just conceded it. And that was the situation Newcastle United found themselves in when they came to Anfield in August for an early season test. Liverpool just beaten Bournemouth 9-0, but have made a stuttering start to the new season with no wins in their first three matches. It looked like the Reds were about to be frustrated again after Roberto Firmino's second half of the equaliser cancelled out Alexander Isak's debut opener for the Magpies. Recognising the value in a hard aim point, Eddie Howe's side employed a range of tactics designed to help run the clock down that frustrated the Liverpool fans and players in equal measure. But there was a sting in the tail for the visitors and in the 98th minute, Newcastle's failure to deal with the corner allowed Fabio Cavallo to swivel and smash the ball into the roof of the net for a late, late winner. The sheer euphoria and despair of the moment inevitably boiled over. Liverpool's goalkeeping coach, John Ackerberg, reacted to the last gap winner by appearing to flick a couple of fingers at the away team's bench. Newcastle's head of performance, Dan Hodges, allegedly went one better by throwing a bottle in the opposite direction. The two clubs' fortunes in the Premier League have been very different since. While Liverpool have struggled to build up any kind of momentum in the league this season, losing seven times already, it's been a very different story for the Magpies, who have continued to make rapid progress under Howe and currently find themselves in the Champions League qualification places, nine points clear to Liverpool. Newcastle supporters of a certain age will know better than to get complacent over a large points advantage, however, as they found out to the cost back in 1995 when Kevin Keegan's hugely exciting side squandered a 12-point lead over Manchester United, handing the Premier League title to the Red Devils as a consequence. The dynamic is pretty different this season, however, with the Geordies ahead of schedule in terms of expected progress under Saudi owners. They've also suffered a little bit of a blip in recent weeks without a win in the last three matches against Arsenal, West Ham United and Bournemouth. Liverpool's much-needed win against Everton combined with the sight of Diogo Jota, Roberto Firmino and Virgil van Dijk all back in their boots has quickly painted a more positive picture of the Reds' prospects for the second half of the season. Beat Newcastle on Saturday and win their game in hand and a nine-point deficit between fourth place and ninth will have been cut to just three. But as mood-lifting as their victory was against the neighbours on Monday evening, there is scant evidence to yet suggest that Klopp's side has turned a corner. Since Liverpool beat Aston Villa on Boxing Day, they have played three away games in the Premier League and lost them all, scoring just once while shipping nine in their own net. Without a doubt, this will be one of Liverpool's toughest games this season. Saturday represents an acid test of where the Reds are up to in their delayed reboot that will make or break Klopp's hopes of salvaging something from a turbulent season. The performance and results should give supporters a greater understanding whether victory against Everton was a triumph for a more positive approach and honed attitude or just a direct consequence of playing a relegation threatened side who are not very good at this moment. So, what can Liverpool expect from this Newcastle side? Well, ironically enough, it's a side that is very much similar to how Klopp approached the game in his first few seasons at Anfield. They line up in a narrow 4-3-3 shape with the midfielders providing the energy to press, drive their team and cover for their fullbacks. They love to recover the ball in dangerous areas of the pitch and will press high when an opposition team likes to play out from the back, which of course Liverpool does. So the question for Klopp is, does he tell his players to build from the back as usual and risk conceiving a confidence-busting early goal again or look to a more direct route using the height of Darwin Nunes and Cody Gakpo as target men? With the Champions League game against Real Madrid coming up next week, I'd expect Jordan Henderson to drop to the bench with Naby Keita coming back in. In defence, Virgil van Dijk could be in line for a comeback next to Joe Gomez. Joel Matip's ability to break the lines by bringing the ball out from the back could see him retain his place though, as Newcastle are strong and organised defensively. This is a game which is evenly balanced and could come down to the tactical acumen of the respective bosses. If Liverpool can get a positive result, then it could shape the narrative of the second half of the season, with an assault on the top four become a realistic opportunity and a possible Champions League run on the horizon.